What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanna to talk about setting up prices for your beats online. You know, it's a topic that I've seen like a lot of producers kind of question about, you know, how do I do it? How do I come up with these prices? And uh, <laughs> it's something I think I have a lot of experience with, you know? You know, it's a topic that I've seen a lot of producers kind of question and I get it, it's kind of tough to figure out. Um, but I think it's something like I have a lot of experience with, you know, through selling beats online for like 11 years. There's a lot I've learned and a lot that I can talk about. But before we dive into that, I wanna say if you find any of these tips in this video useful, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell notification. Um, I'm gonna be posting videos on this channel uh, for the next little while, every Monday and Friday. So I'm gonna have a lot of videos coming soon about making beats and selling beats and a whole lot of you know great stuff soon that you guys won't wanna miss. And also before we get too much into my you know personal pricing strategies, I do want to say that, you know, selling beats online and coming up with prices, it's not like a one size fits all type of thing. I've seen producers who sell, you know, beats starting at a hundred to two hundred dollars. And I've also seen producers sell, you know, hundreds of beats for fifteen or twenty dollars, like all in one package. And I've seen both of these types of producers absolutely kill it online. Like there's no right way to do this in this video i'm going to share you guys what works well for me but you know what works well for me might not necessarily work exactly the same for you but you might get some ideas on how to make your own licensing options a little bit better for the customer and i do want to mention too that i came up with a lot of these options some i've had since basically you know the very first time i sold my beats but other of my pricing options i've kind of tweaked over the years and i came up with these after uh talking with some of my friends who have absolutely no knowledge of selling beats online which was so kind of critical in coming up with these good licensing options you know i asked my buddies who uh <laughs> they've never bought a beat online before they have no idea you know really even like what I do but I sent them my website and I said hey go to this site see if you can purchase a beat and a lot of them you know gave me feedback and said like I don't know what this kind of pricing means this is too confusing and that was a really big eye-opener for me like I realized like you know if someone is going to my website and maybe you know they hear my beat and it's the first beat that they're ever gonna buy before because this definitely happens and uh, if people are confused, they're gonna lose interest and move away from your site. So that's why, you know, I spent some time and I tried really hard to make these licensing options um, really kind of easy for anyone to understand. Okay, so let's dive into my own pricing options now. I have four uh, leasing options, but I always tell people to think of it as basically two categories. And if anyone comes to my website and they're, you know, kind of still confused, I always ask people to think about, you know, what are your plans for releasing the song with the beat once you have it recorded. You know, if it's a, if it's more on like a smaller scale, like people are just using it maybe in a, a little music video, a little fun project, then they're putting it for free listening online, like YouTube or, you know, SoundCloud. Websites where they're not necessarily getting paid for it, um, I have an option on my site called a non-commercial license. This is basically like non-profit use for my beats. Uh, it's definitely a starter license. I know some producers like, you know, don't even bother with non-profit leases. I've had this option ever since that I started selling beats. And to this day, it's still like, is really valuable for me to have on my website. Within these like non-profit or non-commercial categories of licenses, I basically have two subcategories. Uh, that give people a little bit more option, but I'll explain that in just a little bit. And then if an artist, you know, is, you know, has more serious plans for the beat, uh, if they want to, you know, make money through streaming services or radio or sell copies of their song, um, I have a commercial license for this. And these commercial options basically, you know, give artists the rights and the permission to make money through the song that they make with my beat. Having these two categories, you know, have worked really well for me. Uh, because it, it basically, you know, it covers all areas as a, as an artist. Like, are you, you know, just using it on a smaller scale, trying out the beat? You know, here are your options. Are you more serious? Are you going to, you know, get money, get paid off your song? Here are other options. Kind of covers all, you know, basis. And then with that, once an artist, you know, figures out kind of their plan for releasing their song, I give them two options. I give them a basic and a premium option. And what this is, is basically now it's an option to kind of upsell the customer a little bit. You know, if an artist has a, a little bit more budget, you know, they want to spend a little bit more, I give them that option where, you know, if you spend a little bit more from a basic lease to a premium lease, 
you can get things like you know the trackout stems or unlimited distribution rights it's basically like if you're giving people an option to spend more through your site you're gonna get people who are gonna spend more if you only give people like these small items and these small you know sections of, of buying beats they're gonna kind of be like trapped in there but if you expand them and, and give people an option some people are gonna go for it okay and let me dive into these a little bit further because I know that there's gonna be some questions um, especially with my commercial licenses you know I feel like my non commercial licenses they're pretty straightforward like it's basically like you know a non-profit lease you're not making money off your song you're uploading online that's cool but my commercial licenses I know it might be a little bit controversial because there's nowhere in here that states that you know you have to share your royalties with me as a producer and this is totally intentional and I know it's like kind of super controversial because I know that there's times where you know if I was added to splits on a song I would be making you know more money and you know what happens if like Drake comes to my website you know buys this lease for $150 makes millions off of it I only make you know $150 I know that's a risk and it's something that in my business that's you know the best business model for me and I'll explain that but it, it works really well and it makes sense for both myself and the people who are buying my beats you know my main goal with these pricing options was to make it easy and that's something I stated in the in the beginning that your pricing options need to be easy for the consumer when I start getting into things like okay you know you need to add me for splits you need to add my you know uh, publishing information my songwriting information add me on all this stuff it becomes extra work for both the artist and myself and you know this was something that I found with actually having conversations with my buyers is that a lot of people just want to buy a beat make their song put it online keep it simple like that so that's why I'm cool with making it you know so easy and maybe I'm missing out on you know some royalties but at the same time since it's a lease I still have ownership of the beat I can sell other copies of the lease I can do other you know things with this beat so I can still kind of make money through this beat even though I'm not connected to the royalties of someone else's song and I find that you know majority of the times if there's a really big artist you know who has plans like a Drake or, or someone on that level you know who wants a beat they're gonna want to go a really serious way they're not gonna want that beat online for other people to purchase and that's where they'll go the exclusive route and that's where we can get into you know royalty splits and publishing and all this stuff just based on the situation and that's also why I don't have this specific exclusive rights option through my website is just because you know I find it kind of varies from you know artist to artist even the beats kind of vary it depends you know on the situation and I find exclusive rights is the place like to ask for royalties and, and publishing and, and all stuff like that and I do want to mention you know one other thing is I want to talk a little bit about sales and discounts because I, I realized just this past year um, I kind of did this thing with discounts and it worked really really well for me on my own website I've had a buy two get one free deal um, like I said for pretty much the <laughs> exactly a year now and it's worked really well you know sometimes I see producers who do things like uh, buy one get three free and I've always had like a problem with this because I feel like you know if someone's going to your website let's say they hear a beat on YouTube and they're going to buy you know a beat from you uh, they go to your website they're all ready to buy that one beat and then all of a sudden they find out that they can get three more beats for the same price like it, of course they're gonna take advantage of that it's you know it's it's just why wouldn't they it's already there but for me on my website I wanted to do a buy two get one free because this way in order to take advantage of this discount you know take advantage of this sale the buyer needs to spend a little bit more it's like you get a little bit more reward for putting in that extra effort you know spending a little bit extra you get to take advantage of that sell it's like you know getting people basically to upsell them and then they get you know uh, another beat for free but they have to go through that upsell of buying a second beat to get a third beat for free and I think that this is definitely the best method definitely don't do like a buy one get 10 free I've seen producers do it 
and if it works for them great but for me it's like I've had so much success with getting people to spend a little bit more if they want to take advantage of any discounts that I have and for me honestly like that's it I've had these pricing options for uh, a couple of years now and I haven't really tweaked them too much because it's worked really well for me and like I said in the beginning you know a lot of these options came from me asking you know my buddies who you know have never purchased the beat in their life and I honestly think that's like the best way right if someone can go to your website with absolutely you know no knowledge of buying beats if they can successfully purchase a beat you know add to their cart understand the licensing if they buy it and it makes sense for them then you know anyone at that point is going to be able to buy beats so that's what I really recommend guys is just to keep it you know simple straightforward the easier it is the less roadblocks that you're gonna have so I'm gonna wrap up this video there um, again if you guys found this video useful please consider hitting that subscribe button uh, leave a comment too. let me know what your strategies for pricing your beats are and like I said for the next little bit I'm gonna be posting new videos on Mondays and Fridays which I'm pretty excited about it. I have a lot of cool uh, video ideas coming soon. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks again for watching.